Hey everybody, I hope your day is going great. It's about to get better because we're gonna jump into some amazing helpful hints at the start of your gardening season. It's spring. I want you to stop before you jump into doing four different things that are gonna be key to success. This, by the way, if you haven't met him before, is Soda Pop. This is our spring garlic, and I think our cat Murphy is playing somewhere in the middle of this. The idea that I wanna work with on you today in this video is that there's critical things in time management in all beautiful areas of life. We're often doing less or doing things at the right time make all the difference. So we wanna to try to eliminate any unnecessary work. We wanna automate any jobs that we can. And we wanna most of all accelerate in the garden by thoughtfully choosing our timing when nature has given us most of its love for our growing. So I'm gonna ask you four questions in today's video, and in each question, there's gonna be hopefully an ability for you to clearly understand what your best choice of action to do, and it's gonna be in four areas. Germination, protection, suppression, and irrigation. So we're gonna jump into those four areas, a question in each area, and I promise you that if you are able to confidently answer yes to each of those questions, you are gonna be having an incredible success in the garden this season. Here we go. I'm Stacy Tates. For me, healthy food and sustainability are totally connected. You can grow it yourself. Nature is generous. So as promised, we're wanting to ask four questions and I'm wanting to help you make sure that you have a resounding yes to answer each of the four questions. And the first one very simply is, is your soil warm enough to grow your veggies? Germination is what we're talking about. If your soil is not warm enough to grow your veggies, you may have a short spell of really warm weather and you think, oh, it's really warm out, but that's during the day when you're awake and it's sunny out. And then maybe at night, as happens where we live, frost comes. And so I may have some trees that are um, putting out some pollen and putting out leaves and rhubarb that's growing great, but I go to put a seed in the ground or transplant a start and it's actually still too cold and the soil's not warm enough for them to sustain, especially at night, because veggies can be a bit fragile. That's why I want you to see what's on the screen next, which is a hardiness zone map. You need to find for your area of where you garden, a hardiness zone map. And I know many people who are watching my videos are in the US. I live on the West Coast in Canada. So I'm bringing up a map of the US hardiness zones. They number depending on where you live, the coldest regions have the smallest numbers and the hottest regions have the warmest numbers. And what they're really looking at is the extreme minimum temperatures, really cold temperatures that persist in the winter time because that determines how long your winter is usually and how hard it is for plants to survive if they have to survive through the winter like perennial plants so some things that i grow survive through the winter great and they take off again in the spring and others in colder zones would die i'm in zone eight so zone eight is what i think of and if you find out what hardiness zone you're in you'll be able to determine quite clearly what's the right window of time to plant so that you don't make a very common mistake which is plant early and hope things are going great because it's warm during the day and then a cold snap comes and it kills off or radically destroys your germination rates so is your soil warm enough for your seeds to germinate and your new starts that are transplanted to survive? If the answer is yes, and you've used a hardiness zone map, you're in business, you've got a yes, and you've passed the first question. Good job, let's go on to number two. Remember again, that we're thinking about gardening, not for a day, but gardening for a season. Making good choices so that you can either accelerate, which is what germinating in warm weather will do, or eliminate things that could cause problems over time or even automate things that you could automate. So in this case, the question I wanna ask you is, are your veggies gonna be safe from everything that wants to eat them except you? Are your veggies gonna be safe from everything that wants to eat them except you? And I've got behind me on purpose two examples that you can see of how to protect your veggies. One is a row cover where I use PVC pipe, which is attached to rebar down here. And then it's got a row cover called Reme cloth. And I've got videos for that on my YouTube channel explaining how to make a portable greenhouse or put up a hoop house. But you can also see further back behind me a fence that the deer can't jump over. So I've got something to keep the deer out of my garden and something to, in the winter especially and in the spring to keep the rabbits off of my veggies. This was all an overwintering bed and it kept off the snow and protected it from the snow and then it protected from the rabbits as well. 
So having multiple layers or barriers of protection is the way that I'm able to keep what I know is most wanting to munch on my veggies, except for me. You might have squirrels, or you might have mice, or other things that want to attack your crops, and you need to find a solution that's going to work best, and I find a double solution is usually the most powerful. Fence, row cover is a beautiful combo. So are your veggies safe? Those are two good examples of how to look after that. Let's go on to question number three. For a person who loves to garden, there's certain aspects that are the most enjoyable. I love planting, and I love harvesting, and I love showing my garden to others, and I love sharing what I've grown with others so that they can go away with much of the abundance that I've experienced. Now, there's certain ways to garden just like every part of life that when you do it well, it's super enjoyable and rewarding. And there's other ways of gardening in the same space with the same tools if you don't have as much knowledge that can be frustrating and leave you discouraged. That's because some people garden for a day and I always wanna train people to garden for a season. Make great choices once and it'll come back to you sevenfold because you'll have so much more significant experience in the garden because you planned ahead. I created a whole course that took a whole year to build called GetBackyardAbundance.com and the entire plan of GetBackyardAbundance.com is to get people into gardening whether they're brand new beginners or they're lifelong gardeners and give them the most optimal hints and ideas to garden significantly for a season. I promise you, because I've got feedback now from over a thousand people who've taken the course, that GetBackyardAbundance.com is causing people to have experiences in the garden they never had before, even seasoned gardeners, because they go, wow, now that I do it this way, Stace, it makes so much more sense and it's so much more enjoyable. Please check it out. I promise you, just like the ideas in today's video, it'll help a lot. Question number three is really simple. Do you have a solid weed control plan? Do you have a solid weed control plan? And by that, I'm not even suggesting that you should be thinking about spraying harmful chemicals on your garden, because if you want to grow healthy food and put it in your body, I bet you'll agree with me, you don't want to put harmful chemicals into your garden. By a, by a solid weed control plan, I mean, do you have a way of covering the soil so that the soil is happy and protected, but that will also cause no weeds to grow? Now this was planted, this row that's beside me, of beets and chard and things last year in the fall, and it's grown all through the winter, and I've had all the rest of the garden bed that you can see here covered by a layer of compost and then cardboard and then coffee sacks and I put some old wood pieces down on it and you can even see my drip irrigation lines are here ready to go for when I do the planting. Now you know that when you put a seed or a small plant, a start into the ground, you'll only need to open up a small piece of soil, a small area, maybe four inches or 10 centimeters wide. So I only reveal that much soil and tuck my seeds and my starts along my drip line. And the result of that is there's no exposed soil to grow weeds. So now I've saved myself a pile of time. I'm quite slow and methodical in planting, but then I never have to come out and weed. The other really big thing, and this is huge guys, when you get it, it's gonna blow your mind. When you have a weed control plan and you never have to pull weeds, it means that the food that you're growing never has to compete for nutrition. So the roots of my plants are all the only roots under there that are getting nutrition, which means all the goodness in this soil is reserved only for the plants that I wanna grow because there's no weeds sucking the energy. Can you see how powerful that is? Most of my veggies doubled in size in the two years that I transitioned to learning to have a solid weed control plan so that my plants didn't have to share the garden's nutrition with weeds that I didn't want to grow. So do you have a solid weed control plan? I'm just going to show you a few pictures there. You can use straw, you can use cardboard, you can use sacks. Anything that you can come across, usually that's free, is going to be absolutely perfect to keep the soil healthy and covered and protected, and as a result, keep the weeds from coming up at all to save you lots of time and grow way more veg. Solid weed control plan wins every time. Let's go on to the fourth and final question that I wanna ask you an answer for you. Okay, we're getting in close and personal for this fourth and final question, guys. The question's simple. Are you watering only your crops? If you're watering only your crops, it means that you're purposely targeting with intention water only to the roots of the plants that you're wanting to grow and eat, which means you're not wasting water that's being evaporated in the air, and you're not putting water onto plants that you don't want to grow. So the solution to that is very simple. It's automation. It's drip irrigation. You can see here in this bed, which is overwintered, it's got all these big, beautiful plants that have come up now in spring, and pretty soon I'll be turning it over. I'll be cutting off the roots of these plants 
and are cutting off the stumps rather and leaving the roots underground to nourish and push health back into the soil. But I'm going to leave the sacks that are covering because they're protecting the soil and you'll see that I have drip lines here. There's one here, there's one here, and there's another one here. These drippers, every 30 centimeters or every foot, they just drip a little bit of water out. And there's just an on-off tap at the top of each of them. Usually once a week or twice a week, depending on the warmth of the season, I turn them on and the water goes only to the roots of the crops that I'm growing. And because between the rows, I'm suppressing the weeds and covering the soil, that also keeps the moisture in. So see how magically all this pulls together? It takes a little bit of time. And I've got a great video on my YouTube channel and you can check out in other places as well where to set up simple automated drip irrigation. So you're only getting water to where you want your plants that you're going to harvest to get them. And you're not wasting any water and it ends up just being literally drip drip and you get everything you need. Okay guys, I hope this has been super helpful. What I've tried to do is hopefully cause you to think about the fact that you don't need to hurry in spring to just suddenly rush out and plant your garden, but rather instead of gardening for a day, slow down and deliberately think about how to garden for a season. And the result is that if you ask and can answer successfully these four questions, you're going to have radical success season after season because you've put a plan in place. So just to review, first of all, we're wanting to accelerate. We want to take advantage of the warm weather and wait for it using a zone hardiness map. So it's a it's an acceleration question. When are you going to be able to lean into the power of nature coming at you beautifully? So is your soil warm enough to grow? So you're looking at germination issues. Is your soil warm enough to grow? That was the first question. The second question by review related to protection. Are you going to be able to eliminate the things that want to eat and prey on your veggies so that you alone are going to get to enjoy them or at least primarily be the one to enjoy them? So whether it's birds or squirrels or rabbits or deer, do you have the right protection in place? And I made a few suggestions of how you could protect your crops. And then we looked at suppression, how to suppress those weeds by eliminating the nasty competition and also the work that most people don't get up in the morning to go out and do in their garden. We don't look forward to weeding nearly as much as planting and harvesting. So cover your soil, your garden will give it back to you in spades as a blessing because now your crops won't need to compete with the weeds. So protect the soil and suppress the weeds. Find a creative way, usually for free, it'll be worth it. And finally, automation. We're asking the question about irrigation. Are you getting the water only to the, the roots of the crops that you want to grow? And if you can automate your irrigation plan once with drip irrigation, you are going to be golden. I hope that's been super helpful for you. And guys, if you've been coming along for this one on YouTube, thanks a lot for joining in. Please subscribe to the channel. Please hit that notification bell so we can keep on sending you more hopeful, helpful, healthy tips. And until next time.